sorry about that. While I get sorted out, some quick thanks to my amazing patrons. I greatly appreciate every single one of my patrons, including new patrons, Eric Hare, Timo, Warren J, Cheese Mondo, Brian A. Reed, Mr. Bozo Head, Thomas B, Sven Arn Grimson, Andy Woods, and Glenn Chapman, and my latest patron, Dark Saber. Thank you all so very much. I'd also like to give thanks to Osvaldo Greco. I mentioned the subject of today's video to him about a month, six weeks ago, and um, he managed to find a couple of images that I was after and I'd not been able to track down. So thanks for that, Oz. Today we're going to look at why the lunar roving vehicle proves that we went to the moon. First of all, a historic video clip that will tell us a bit about the development of the lunar roving vehicle. Roll VT. Actually seeing the quality of the graphics there just proves we could not have possibly CGI'd and faked the moon landings back then. During the early Apollo years, NASA scientists and engineers anticipated the need for a vehicle to aid the astronauts in exploring the moon. It was expected that bulky spacesuits, limited life supplies, and other inherent weaknesses would decrease man's mobility on the lunar surface. In 1964, with conceptual design of the Mobile Laboratory, or MOLAB, NASA began research on lunar surface vehicles. Over the next few years, an entire spectrum of vehicles was designed and studied. From these efforts came the knowledge that contributed directly to the development of the lunar roving vehicle. Its development required solution of many challenging technical problems for which there were no precedents in terrestrial vehicle design and operation. All the required research for this sort of thing is where a lot of NASA money goes. Developing things like this, things that have never been developed before, is expensive. The extremes of surface temperatures, plus or minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit, the very weak gravity, one-sixth of Earth's, and the many unknowns associated with the lunar soil and topography. All these factors imposed severe and unique requirements on the LRV. Spot the error in that little clip. The LRV would be a two-man, four-wheeled vehicle, 10 feet 2 inches long, 44 inches high, with a 7.5 foot wheelbase, weighing 460 pounds earth weight, and capable of carrying a total payload of 1,080 pounds. The mobility system, which must be able to cross 12-inch high obstacles and 28-inch diameter craters, consists of the wheels, traction drive, suspension, steering, and drive control electronics. Long duration torture testing on this so-called carousel simulating the lunar surface verified the durability of the wheel design. A mobility test unit was used in early phases of development to validate the LRV mobility system. The astronauts participated as they did in all aspects of LRV development. Two 36 volt silver zinc batteries provide the vehicle's power. Each wheel is individually powered by a one-fourth horsepower electric motor. One quarter horsepower per wheel. So that's one horsepower. I wonder if they tried to make a spacesuit for an actual horse first. <laughs> that would have been interesting. A highly efficient harmonic drive system, originally developed by the U.S. Shoe Machinery Corporation for other purposes, is used with each motor, eliminating the need for a transmission and its gears. At the Manned Spacecraft Center, the 1G trainer was operated using counterbalance springs to simulate the moon's gravitational field. Through operation of the trainer in this mode, astronauts were able to become accustomed to the LRV months before actual use during their mission. Storage and deployment of the vehicle provided major design challenges. As shown here by this special test unit built to equal on Earth the LRV's lunar weight, the vehicle had to fit within the tight wedge-shaped confines of one small section of the lunar module, about the volume contained in a family station wagon. Conversely, on the moon, the LRV has to essentially unfold itself by means of springs and deploy to the lunar surface, locked in its operating configuration, all with minimum assistance from the astronauts. 
After delivery to KSC, the vehicle was unfolded and completely checked out again, and another crew station review was conducted. The LRV was then folded for the final time and installed in its flight position inside the lunar module of the Apollo 15 spacecraft, several months before launch. I think we can leave the archival film there. I will put a link to it in the description because it's a fascinating 15-minute watch. Well, well worth it. But as you can see, here's a photo of the LRV folded up, ready to be loaded. And a second one where the guys are actually loading it up to the Apollo lunar excursion module. Now, I know just what you're going to say. You're going to say, yes, Mr. Sensible, but that doesn't prove anything about the moon. Yes, Mr. Sensible, but that doesn't prove anything about the moon. Shut up, Alexa. I think we need to move on. Let's have a look at some other buggies. Oh, that looks fun. Great stuff. So I assume that all they did for this fake NASA to mission to the moon is they used a fancy June buggy. I think we'd better have a look at the actual buggy, the rover, in use on the moon. I've managed to get hold of some 4K upscaled footage. This is the lunar rover with the image stabilised, used in Apollo 16, 21st of April 1972. You can see how the suspension's working with the surface. Oh, and Nathan Oakley. If you look right to the top of the picture, you can see a geometric horizon. That one is a geometric horizon. Incidentally, anyone who didn't spot the error the NASA guy made in the earlier clip, it's that the moon doesn't have soil. It has regolith. It's a mix of large and smaller particulates and fine dusts and so on. So this is all very well. Why does this lunar rover prove that it's on the moon? Well, just look at the dust that it kicks up. It is not behaving as it does on Earth. The dust is thrown up and moves in perfect parabolas. You can see what the astronauts on Apollo 16 called rooster tails coming off the back of the lunar rover. That is not how sand and dust behaves on Earth with an atmosphere. What you get is billowing clouds of dust, not nice, neat curves of dust that fall down in a perfect parabola. Let's have a look again at some of the dune buggies. Well, you have a nice big dusty cloud there, which we didn't see from the lunar rover. And the same again, only this time the dusty cloud seems to be, what, five, six times the length of the vehicle itself? Don't recall seeing that behind the lunar rover either. Again, no nice neat parabolas, just a bit of a mess and cloudy dust really, as you'd expect in an atmosphere. Yep, reckon we got the same again there. And again that buggy rushing towards us with a huge cloud of dust behind. Looking again here at the lunar rover, it's just starting to move off, but even so you can see some of the dust in front and behind the tyres as it's being thrown up because that dust is very fine and the gravity is only one sixth so it's easy to pick it up and throw it and you can tell how fine it is look at those footprints leading from the bottom middle towards the front wheel
Now this is not sped up, not slowed down, it's real time. Look how long that dust is suspended before it manages to fall back down in a parabola because the gravity is that much lower. But then the usual accusation is that this filming is all slowed down. Let's have a look at it sped up then. So here we are, three times speed, which doesn't look very natural and there's no great billowing clouds of dust or sand thrown up. So how can that be? But to throw up the sand or dust, it has to be going fast. Because otherwise, well, let's have another look at that last shot of the dune buggy. Well, we got that buggy going fast towards us with big clouds of dust. But there's that little black and yellow one in the front going away from us, going slowly and nothing kicked up. So which is it? Is the lunar rover going quickly but slow down, in which case why isn't there clouds of dust? Or is it going slowly, in which case how is it kicking up any dust at all? So there you have it, the lunar rover proves we were on the moon. You could not fake that on Earth. In order for the dust to be thrown up against our gravity, you have to be going at speed. And yet we've seen that the lunar rover was not going at speed. Any dust that's kicked up in an atmosphere would form billowy clouds, whereas we've seen with the lunar rover, it's nice, neat parabolas. So it was in a vacuum. We went to the moon. The lunar rover shows that. And I can't wait till we go back to the moon again and I hope it's soon. Until next time, stay well and be sensible. Shut up and sit down.